In this video, we will talk about rotor balance in, in one plane. This is part of a mechanical vibration course. My name is Carmen Müller Carrier. Figures and content are adapted from these three references. Rotating machinery, such as turbines, compressors, electric motors, pumps, are heavy rotors mounted in a lightweight, flexible shaft that is supported by bearings. As illustrated in this figure, unbalance due to manufacturing errors and or other effects such as stiffness and damping of the chaff or the bearing, fluid friction in the bearings, gyroscopic effects, or many others, will cause a chaff to bend in a complicated manner at certain rotational speeds. The rotor unbalance is commonly a synchronous vibration. The actual balance condition of an assembled rotor is never fully known prior to, during, or even after a successful balance process that is executed either in the shop or in the field. The unbalanced force is a function of the mass of the eccentric part or rotor, the distance or eccentricity of the part or rotor, and the operational speed. That's why we said that the vibration is synchronous. Then, if this is the harmonic unbalanced force, the steady step response is governed by this expression, where r squared m, being m the magnification factor, is a function of the operational speed divided by the natural frequency of the system, but also of the damping coefficient. And here we can see that for very low damping coefficient close to the critical speed, we can get very high magnitudes of this response. The rotor imbalance can be detected using non-contact proximity probes. Here you can see those in this rotor motor for flexible support. The balance correction is most effective when it's applied to the component that has the unbalance. And the only way to assess the unbalance is to add balance correction weight at various locations and measure the vibration reduction. There may be a reasonable residual unbalance that will not be eliminated. There are several balance options, including several different methods. We can list some of them, which are correction weights, that are added at a single correction plane, correction weights added at two correction planes. Normally, those two planes are close to the supporting bearings. Or there is also calculated techniques where more than two planes or multiple speeds are considered in the calculation. The selection of the field balance technique is dependent on the dynamic characteristics of the rotor combined with the available balance correction planes and, of course, the knowledge of the machine operating requirements. The most basic method for rotor balancing is a single plane balance, also called the method of influence coefficient. This method could be applied using a graphical approach or an analytical approach. There are seven steps for either approach, graphical or analytical. I will explain each of these steps separately in the following slides. Let's then go over the method of the influence coefficient step by step. The first step is to measure the initial vibration vector. That's due to the unknown unbalance of the machine. We will measure the amplitude and the phase angle. It can be represented graphically as a vector with magnitude and direction, and we will convert the vector from polar coordinates, that is magnitude and phase, to Cartesian coordinates, which is real and imaginary components, or horizontal and vertical components. For a second step, a trial weight of known mass, distance, and angle is applied to the rotor, and the response is measured. Again, magnitude and phase angle. Graphically, we can represent that as another vector with magnitude and direction. Again, we convert the polar coordinates in terms of Cartesian coordinates. 
This response represents the original unbalance plus the unbalance produced by the thread weight that we applied to the rotor. In step three, we will subtract both vectors to calculate the effect produced only by the trail weight. We have the subtraction in the Cartesian coordinates, and then we can convert back to polar coordinates, calculating the magnitude and the phase angle of this vector. Graphically, we can see that the original unbalanced plus the unbalance produced by the trail weight will be the vector that we measure in the second run. The influence coefficient is calculated as the response of the trail weight that we just calculated divided by the non trail weight that we applied to the rotor. To divide those two vectors, we divide the magnitudes and subtract the phase angles. The influence coefficient describes how a rotor reacts to an unbalanced correction weight. When we place the trail weight in the rotor, we get this response. We can write the component respect to the trail weight in terms of the influence coefficient. Since the system is linear, we can assume that if we put a different correction weight, we will get a different response. So this equation is valid for any correction mass. Step five is set up this response as zero to get a balanced system. And then we can name the mass that give us a zero amplitude as our correction mass. Therefore, the correction mass that will contrarest the heavy spot of the system that is creating the unbalance will be calculated as the initial response divided by the influence coefficient. For a balanced system, we force the response to be zero, and then we calculated the correction mass. And now we have to also calculate the correction angle. To divide those two vectors, we divide the magnitudes and we subtract the angles. As you see here, this vector is negative. It goes in the opposite side of the heavy spot. If we write it, the magnitude as positive, we just add 180 to express our vector in the opposite direction. The last step of our process is to do a validation row to verify if the balancing solution is satisfactory and we will do that by comparing the vibration amplitude that we get in this validation run with the original amplitude. The ratio between the validation and the initial run amplitude should show the reduction in vibration and should confirm that the balancing process was satisfactory. If you want more information about balancing rotors, you can check those references.